right? So hi everyone, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us at Pasale Pasale Time Sensitive Academic Advising Session focused on students in the College of Humanities and Arts. My name is Elisa Kino, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the program coordinator at the Chicanx Latinx Student Success Center. Momentarily, I will be turning it over to Stephanie Garcia, who is our Centro Academic Advisor, and she'll be sharing more information uh, that is college specific and focused on those of you who are majoring within the College of Humanities and Arts, or if you're interested in pursuing a major within the Humanities and Arts. Now, there's there is important information that is time sensitive that will be shared and Stephanie will also be talking about what advising looks like within the Humanities and Arts Success Center. And lastly, she will be covering you know, the purpose of advising to give you a better understanding of what advising looks like at San Jose State. And as you may already know, advising at San Jose State is a little complex as you have major advisors, you also have academic advisors through the success centers. And then in addition to that, some of you might be in different programs and have other advisors like the EOP or even through the career center. So we hope that today you can get a better understanding about the advising community and that you get your questions answered so that you feel more comfortable going forward during your journey here at San Jose State. So feel free to ask any questions throughout the presentation on the chat box, and we will go over these questions at the end of Stephanie's presentation. And without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Stephanie. So take it away. All right, thank you, Lisa. Hello, I am Stephanie Garcia, academic. Oh, I think I got muted there. Um, I don't know if any of you attended the, um, the last session, but in case you didn't, just to give you a little bit about who I am. Um, I actually attended San Jose State in my undergrad. I did liberal studies prep for teaching. Um, I, I wanted to be a teacher, but then um, I did my internship with first and third graders, and I soon realized that that is not what I wanted to do. Um, it was just, it's a really hard job. It's a really, it's a job that you need to be really passionate about. And it's not that I wasn't passionate about it. It was just that there was a lot of obstacles that um, schools placed on, on their teachers. And um, I, I just felt like it wasn't something that I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to connect with the students. And I feel like um, that just wasn't something that I was going to be able to get um, doing that with the K through 12. And so I graduated with the liberal studies degree and I tried to, to figure out what I wanted to do. So I took a year off of school, um, tried to figure out what, what to come back or what I wanted to do as a career. Um, and I soon realized that um, I still wanted to work with students, but I did want to work in higher education. And so I went back to school to do my MA in education um, with a counseling focus. And so I completed that in 2017. Um, and that's what brings me here to this position today. And I love my job. I love working with you guys. Um, it's, it's just really rewarding. And um, I, I get to have fun. You know, I get to have fun with you guys. I get to make sure that you guys are on your right path to what you guys want to do. Um, and even if you're not on the right path right now with your undergrad, just like I was, you know, I, I didn't go into what I thought I was going to do with my undergrad. It doesn't mean that that's the end. You can always do more. You can always go to grad school. And it doesn't mean that you have to do, you know, get a career in what you're doing um, with your major right now. So there's, there's you know, tons of possibilities um, with what you can do with your major. Um, so don't just think that, you know, I'm graduating with this. I have to do this. Um, that's not always the case. And so um, that's a little bit about me. Um, hopefully I'll get to know about you guys a little bit later. Um, but I do want to get into, um, you know, giving you guys a little bit about what h &A does about advising and then how you guys can get advising uh, with us because I think that's very important for you guys to know, especially during this time because it's, it's, it's different, right? You're not just coming into an office and asking questions. And so we want to make sure that you guys know exactly what you need and that, you know, when you have certain questions, who to go to um, and to get those answered. And so I will be sharing a presentation with you guys. Uh, let's see, hopefully you'll be able to see this. And so you should hopefully be able to see this question. Can everybody see this presentation? 
Yes. All right. Okay. Great. So let's. So again, that's me, Stephanie. Um, so my central hours are going to be on Tuesdays from 10 to 11. So if you have any questions, that is the best time to reach me because it's, de it's designated for you guys. Um, so I'll, I think they're going to put out the Zoom link um, soon. And then you'll be able to just do a drop in. And what I'll have is a, a waiting room. And then whoever comes in at that time, I'll just be taking those students um, to, you know, to answer your questions. So that's only for an hour. So I know that, you know, that might not be enough for, you know, all the students, but um, you can definitely make appointments with me outside of these times. And I'll make sure to, to go over that later today to see how you can make appointments with not just me, but with other advisors in the center. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so you'll get more information about how to uh, join those uh, Zoom drop-in meetings, um, I think later on uh, uh, this week or next week or sometime, sometime soon. Um, so just to make sure that you're in the right place, uh, these are the uh, majors within, or major departments within the humanities and the arts. So if you see yours on here, then you're in the right place. All right. And then I'm going to skip because Lupe was supposed to be here today, but she's having a little bit of technical issues. Um, she is our admin. So I, I do want to touch upon this because uh, this is one of the person that when we do come back on campus, she's going to be the one that you're really going to get to know because she's the first uh, uh, person you'll see when you walk into the office. Um, and she'll probably be helping a little bit in, um, in our virtual front desk. When I talk about that, you'll know a little bit more. Um, and so definitely get to know her. Um, she's very friendly and she just, she wants to help everybody. So um, definitely, uh, you know, work with her and, and she'll help you get to the right place that you need to be. All right, let's see next. All right, so I just wanted to go over all the other advisors that are in our center so that you get to know them because, you know, you might not be able to meet with me during the time that I have my drop in if you have class. So there, there are other people in the center that you definitely can meet with and they can help you uh, these, all the advisors in the center can help with anything related to GE or university requirements. So the first person is Darlene Guerrero. She's our director. So she doesn't really meet with students. It's only if it's like a really urgent issue um, or just something that, that um, you know, uh, that goes beyond what we can take care of as advisors. So she's our director. And then we have Lauren Welch. She's an academic advisor and she's also our data uh, specialist. Um, and she is more focused on uh, the liaison for music and dance. Um, so she just works closely. So when I say liaison, it just means that they work closely with those departments, but it doesn't mean um, that they can't advise any student. Um, then we have Rania Halaihal. She works with journalism and mass, mass communication. Um, and we have Sandy Ho, who uh, works with the humanities. And then she's, uh, Sandy is also our career specialist. So she does a lot of career-based stuff, which I'll talk a little bit um, about later. And then we have Richard Strzok, who deals with, I think it's world languages, um, English, and linguistics. Those are his liaisons. And then Tamara, um, Tamara Goldie, she is the liaison to um, radio, television, film, and theater. So those are our, those are our advisors um, that you, you will see when we come back to the center, you'll see them. And then, you know, you may meet with them um, during the semester if you have any questions that you feel that we feel are more urgent that they'll make an appointment with you. So that being said, we also have student coordinators. So our student coordinators are probably gonna be a lot of the people that you're gonna see if you're gonna be going through our virtual front desk um, because they're the ones that are gonna man that. And so we have seven uh, student coordinators um, that are gonna be knowledgeable about answering, you know, like how to's or like how do I, uh, you know, where do I find the financial aid office or where do I find this petition or where do I find that? Those are the people that are going to get you that information. Um, and they're also going to be able to say, well, yeah, I think that question needs to be directed to an advisor and they'll give you that information on how to do um, those kind of things. And so these are the people that will be helping you. And unfortunately I don't have the pictures of all of them because a lot of them are new to our center, um, but they are all trained um, to be knowledgeable in the information that they're going to be providing you. And if they don't know, do not worry. Lupe will be there to help them, and then we'll be there to assist them as well. All right, so basically, in person, when, when we do go back in person, we're located in Clark Hall 244. Um, this is our email address. Um, if you need to get a hold of anybody, I would say, 
probably not the best place to go for um, to get information. I would say use the virtual front desk um, first, and then if you can't get any, uh, you know, on any off time that they're not available, then you would want to use the H and A email. Um, but we're trying to use more of a, a you know, face to face kind of thing, so you can get your questions answered. Um, our hours of operation are Monday through Thursday, nine to five and then Friday 9 to 4. So usually when we respond to emails or get back to you, that's the time frame of when we're gonna get back to you. Um, and so to not expect um, you know, to get anything back after those hours. And if you do, that's great, but it's not always gonna happen after those hours. It's usually gonna be between those hours. So um, you know, a lot of students have questions. They'll be like, can you get back to me by you know, today? And it's you know, 4.30 more than likely is not gonna be by that time. And so that's good to know that those are operating hours and that that's probably um, the times that we'll get back to you. All right, so what do we do at the h and Center? Um, so we do general advising, we do schedule planning, um, interpreting of policies and procedures. We are the ones that you come to when you're the new student. So you should have seen hopefully my face at some point um, when you started at San Jose State. Um, and then we do pre-graduation general advising and then um, graduation worksheets and hold letters. So basically anything that has to, that, that doesn't have to do with major related stuff, we're going to take care of. So whether it's GEs, whether it's making sure you meet unit counts, that's all going to come through us. Everything else that's major related is going to go to your major advisor. And I kind of clear, I'll clarify that more, I think in the next, in the next one. So how academic work, uh, how academic advising works um, at SJSU. So there's kind of like a three kind of tier thing of how advising works. And so first you have uh, the h and Center, right? So like I said, doing all the GE, interpreting the policies and, and things like that. And then you're gonna have here your major advising. So major advising, course scheduling for major advising. And then, you know, like if you have questions about um, careers or what people are doing or how to get internships, that can also go through your major advisors because they have connections to companies. And so to be able to do that, um, it would be best to go to your major advisor, but we also have career related stuff too in our center and the career center. And so you can definitely utilize that, but the major advisors have connections to companies and to students that have already been working in those fields. And so that's the best route to go when you wanna talk about something like that. And they're also in this field. So they're also working in that field or doing research in that field. And so they, they know uh, about opportunities. Um, and then you have, you know, you, you have the ARS, you have the international students, and then you have the EOP, um, which um, help our specialized student population. Uh, and so definitely utilize those if you're taking part of that. And that doesn't mean that just because you're using those doesn't mean you can't use any of the other three that's to supplement. So that's in addition to uh, what you're already getting with the h &A Center or your major um, advisors. And so definitely utilize those if you are a part of those. Um, but that's, that's basically what advising looks like um, at San Jose State. So you, you definitely have a lot of options, but you, just to make sure you know that you, know, you have a major advisor and then you also have an academic advisor. All right. So I wanted to give more information about how the h and Advising Center is um, doing advising. And I, you know, I talked about the virtual front desk. So basically the virtual front desk is gonna be for quick questions, how to's, or locating resources. Um, and so we're gonna be sending out information on that about how to, uh, how, to, you, uh, how to connect with the virtual front desk. And so you should be receiving an email um, and then we'll have information on the website. So always check the website when you're trying to figure out what to do, because we, we update that to make sure to, it reflects the most current information that we want students to know. Um, and it'll have all that information. So how to contact the virtual front desk, um, how to do the group advising and, and all that good stuff. So basically front desk will be doing quick, uh, quick how to's and quick questions. Group advising, so for right now, group advising is gonna be utilized for students who just need help uh, quickly on like finding out what classes they need for the semester. Um, and so basically what that would be is it would be a 10 minute um, like presentation and then it would go into breakout sessions with one-on-one -on -one with an advisor. So you would be able to meet with an advisor. 
We just want to give a quick overview of what you should know as, you know, as students, what you should know. And then if you have questions after that, then you would be able to meet with an advisor one on one. Um, and we know a lot of students want that one on one experience. And so that's how we're kind of um, gearing it that, you know, if students can get the information that they need within that first 10 minutes and they don't want a one on one appointment, then great. Then we answer the question. But if you still want a one on one appointment, then you still can get that. And so we'll also have that information up um, on the website on the website. And you'll also get an email um, to let you know how to do that. And then appointments, appointments we're holding for anything that is just like an emergency that really needs or really takes a long time to go over. Um, and so that will be determined by us as the advisors. So if a student just feels like, um, you know, what they're getting from the virtual front desk or from the group advising wasn't enough and they want more, um, you know, an in-depth um, session, then that's where an advisor would kind of talk to the student, uh, email the student and find out. Um, if this should be a, a longer appointment and then we would schedule the appointment with the student. So we're trying, you know, we're trying to get all your questions answered within the uh, virtual front desk and with the group advising. And so hopefully that will, will help the students to get the advising help that they need. All right. So again, major advising, uh, major advising at, at San Jose State or in the h &A College Kind of looks a little bit different in, in each department. So some departments have advisors that you know serve by last name of the student. Some of them just you can go to any advisor that you want. Um, so it's really you just have to kind of go to the website and see how they do their advising for for that major. Um, so and like I said, if you don't know who your advisor is, or if you go to the website and you still can't determine who your advisor is then that's when you would use, utilize our virtual front desk. They would be able to, to guide you um, to finding that information. Um, but yeah, every, every department in the H&A kind of does it a little bit different. And so I can't really say, well, this does this and this does this because it, it's different in each one. And so the best place to look for that would be um, the, the website. And if you can't find it, then, then come to our virtual front desk to, to get help with that. And then um, to go over a little bit, I want to go over this a little bit because, you know, in, in our center, we do, we do a lot of things for career base. And so Sandy Ho is the career specialist, works closely with Judy Garcia, who is the career counselor in the career center. And so they put on a lot of events for students um, that is geared towards like resume building. Um, they put on panelist events. And so definitely take advantage of these events. We're gonna be putting on, I think, um, two panelist events, uh, one for art and design, and then one for all the other majors in the h &A. And so definitely take advantage of these because we're gonna be bringing in people that have graduated, that you know, have been working in the field and have you know, a lot of knowledge of how to get into those positions and how, you know, if, even if they did internships during, during the time that they were undergrad, and so definitely take advantage of those. We are gonna be hosting some, um, I think, resume uh, building and cover letters. Um, and it's a great way to do networking. And so if you have any questions about you know, career, we're, we're definitely gonna have um, you know, events that, that's geared, toward, geared for you to, to get that. And uh, I think Judy also is gonna be doing some, some drop-in hours for the H&A. And so look out for that information. And if you want to set up something with Judy, you can always go to the Career Center um, website. And, and uh, I think you can sign up through Handshake, but you can also email her directly um, to get an appointment to talk about those kind of things about career-related stuff. Um, and so th these are the people that you would, you would definitely want to connect with um, in regards to that. All right, and then resources on campus. So, you know, if you're a new student or you're a continued student and haven't been able to take part of anything else other than you know, the Chicanx Latinx, definitely take part in those. You know, uh, there's a lot of things on campus that you know you can take part of and meet new people, and so definitely take advantage of those. Other things to consider is if you need tutoring to go to Peer Connections, um, the Writing Center. Definitely take advantage of those if you need to, you know, get help with your writing. If you're taking any English course or, you know, any of the courses that really you're in, um, take advantage of those things that are being provided to you. Um, 
So those are some of the resources. And again, if you if you don't know what resources are out there, come come to the virtual front desk. You know, meet with an advisor, and we can definitely uh, get you to the right place uh, of wherever you need to go to you know to get whatever you need from the resources that we provide. Um, and so that is the resources on campus. So important dates to remember. So today, so if you have not gotten all the classes that you want. Today would be the last day to add without an ad code as long as the course is still open. So if the course still has that green dot, that means you can go in there and add the course without uh, an ad code. After today, then you would need an ad code no matter if it's green, no matter if it's waitlisted, you would still need an ad code after today. So if you have any, any last adjustments to do, I would do that today so you can get in. Um, cause it's, it's going to be really hard if, if you don't do it because, you know, in, you know, instructors are getting bombarded with emails right now. And so they may miss certain things. And so today would be the day to go in there if you want to add anything else. Uh, Monday, um, August 31st is the last day to drop without a W. So make sure that, you know, if you're not wanting any of those classes that you've been attending, that you go in there and you drop those, um, by that day. Um, and don't wait for instructors to drop you because you know if it passes that day then you're going to be stuck in that class so make sure that you drop anything and you look at your course schedule um, uh, by that date so everything looks good and you're ready to go um, tuesday september 8th is the last day to add classes so you'll still need to add code by that time but you'll be able to add anything um, by the 8th without you know paying any additional fees uh, Wednesday, September 9th is the late add pre-census request. So there's a difference between when you do it, uh, there's a, there's a census date. And so you would have to, right now it would be, um, after the 8th until the 17th would be pre-census. And then after that, you would have to do post-census. And then just to let you know that there's different pricing. So if you do a late add or, um, there, you do have to pay an additional fee. To do late ads and so I would suggest trying to do everything now but if for some reason you can or you get dropped for some reason um, there's there's differences in the price between the late the pre and post um, request uh, so Thursday September 17th is the is the post census and don't worry if you don't know what these means we're here to help you so come to the center if, if this is something if this is a process that you're gonna have to do so we can go over that with you um, Monday, October 5th is the undergrad um, graduation application deadline. So if you are planning to apply for graduation, um, this is the deadline that you would want to meet. Um, so basically, you would want to apply a year. So if you're planning on graduating fall 2021, then you would apply now so that you can get um, two semesters of priority registration. So priority registration it moves you up in when you can um, register for your classes. And so if you are struggling to get into classes that you need, then this would be the best way to, to get those classes because your date will mo be moved up. So um, if, even if you're planning on graduating in the spring, you would still want to apply now because at least you would get one semester of priority registration. Okay. So, and, and um, don't be confused by this is the deadline for, to apply for graduation. This is just to, to get the priority registration. You can apply after that, but that means you're not gonna get priority. And there might be um, things that you may have missed that you won't catch early on. So you always wanna apply at least a year in advance. Some, some departments will only have you apply a semester in advance, um, but you don't wanna apply you know, the semester that you're graduating because what will happen is you might find out that you're missing something and then you thought you were going to graduate and you didn't. And so it's always good to at least at least apply a, a semester before, but the best would be a year before so that you have that two semester to kind of figure out, do I need to add more ca classes? Do I need to take a winter session? Do I need, you know, do I need to do something additional so that I can graduate on time? And so definitely make sure that if you are graduating within the next year, um, that the deadline is October 5th and to make sure you're submitting all the paperwork. Um, work with your department if you are, because everything I think is going to be either email or digital DocuSign, um, because it all has to be sent by the department. So you would fill out everything and then send it either to the advisor or to the department, 
and then they would they would do their signatures and then send it off to the evaluator okay so make sure you're working with your department if that's the case because that's the process that it's going to take and then um, last but not least friday november 13th um, would be the semester withdrawal deadline so if for some reason something happens this semester and i know we're all you know we're all going through a lot um, but if something you know you know you get sick uh, somebody gets sick in your family you know something happens and you can't complete school that would be the last day to withdraw uh, for the semester and so you know if you need that uh, definitely talk to an advisor first so that we can kind of go through that process with you um, and then you know and then apply to, to petition for that and then uh, connect with us so we have a um, an Instagram so you can connect with us on Instagram. Um, we're posting a lot of stuff now. Now that we have our student coordinators, they're really getting into posting um, a lot on the Instagram. So um, if you want to connect with us on there, we post about important dates. We post about events going on. Um, and so that's one way to know about what's going on in our center and just what's going on in general with the university. And so uh, definitely take advantage of that. We post a lot of events that happen within the h &A as well. Um, the Facebook account there, we also post there. And then uh, the HA-Advising uh, is our, um, our website. So definitely go there to check it out and see, you know, like I said, we're going to be updating on how to uh, get a hold of us, where you need to go to ask certain questions. And so that's where you would want to go first uh, when you have a question or when you want to get um, in touch with an advisor. Um, and then, again, our email address. But this is a way to definitely keep connected with us and um, ask questions and just find out more information. And then I think that is it for me as of right now. So I can definitely take some, some questions if anybody has any questions for me. Hi, Stephanie. I actually do have a question for you. Um, if you can elaborate on <coughs> on the extended wait list and what that means. Uh, the extended wait list. So, so wait list. So if you're talking about wait list, like right now, wait list, if you get onto the wait list right now, you can get on. And then if, for, if a student were to drop, um, you would be whatever number you are on the wait list, you would be automatically entered into the class. Um, so you would have to you would have to enter the wait list now, like today. Um, but then after that, then you know, I I wouldn't suggest going onto any wait list. You would want to get into classes that are open. That's what um, that's what I would suggest. Um, because, you know, if you really need classes, if you really need to be a full-time student, then the best way to do that is to get into something that is open because the chances that something will open up later on, especially now that we're in the second week going on to the third week, I think it is, right? Um, is more likely you're not going to be able to get into the class. And so, um, I would, I would definitely say get into a class that is open. Um, if it's a major related course, um, you can try to waitlist that, but I would recommend talking to your major advisor to see if that's even a possibility for you to get into those classes, um, because they're the ones that kind of uh, build that curriculum, build the courses for that, and so they know how many students can be in a class at one point, and if they can go over capacity, and they would be able to tell you right away, you know, like, we have five people in the waiting list, and I, you know, I can only add two more, or, or I can't, I can't add any more, and so that's always a good thing to do is to talk to your major advisor, but I would say um, don't bank on the wait list. Get in, if you need to be full-time, if you need a class right now, get into something that you can get into right now that's open, especially today because you don't need an ad code. All right. Thank I you, think, Stephanie. Yeah, no problem. It looks like uh, Lupe is on now. Yes, Lupe is here. Hi, Lupe guys hi hi everybody sorry it's taking me literally quite some time to get here so i'm here hey lupa do you want to introduce yourself to the students yeah sure hi everybody welcome thank you for being here um my name is guadalupe palet 
but you can call me Lupe for short. I'm the admin coordinator for the H&D Student Success Center, and I've been a part of the team for the past year, roughly, and um, I really enjoy engaging with the students, so I do like my role. Um, a little bit about me is that I, that I would like to share with you guys is that I am a proud mom of two amazing young Latina ladies. Uh, my first daughter is Armani, and she's um, in her second year at the University of Redlands down in San Bernardino County. And my second daughter, Calista, she just entered her first semester yesterday at the University of Redlands as well. So I like to say I now have two bulldogs and um, that's, that's the school's mascot. So, go Redlands. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, that's me. All right, thank you, Lupe. So, so like I said, Lupa is going to be that fun, friendly person that you'll be able to, to see and meet when we do get back into person. And you'll probably uh, see her, you know, if you do the virtual front desk, see, she'll be helping out with that um, here and there. And so um, definitely, you know, connect with her because she's more than willing to help every student. Hi everyone. Hi uh, Stephanie and Guadalupe. Lupe, it's Lily. Um, I also joined in a little late, but I just want to thank both of you for this wonderful and informative uh, presentation. Um, I know that we, uh, Stephanie, I had sent you a couple of questions that some of our students had asked. Um, so I know those were a little bit more specific. So if folks don't have any more general universal questions to ask, uh, what we'll do now at this time is stop the recording so that um, other people can ask more, um, I guess, not as broad or universal, quite more specific questions.